In the future world, humans invent steel matches, but these robots are not used in war. Instead as boxers in the ring, Charlie is a robot manipulator, but his life is not good. Ambush is just an old robot and is not qualified to compete in large arenas. Charlie has to take it to the remote countryside, and its opponent is not another robot. At this moment, a bull is charging toward it, but Charlie is not an ordinary person. As a former boxer, he directs Ambush easily to tease the opponent. When they are about to win, Charlie's old habits come back to haunt him. He not only belittles his opponent but also takes time to flirt with a girl. However, just in the next second, Ambush has his leg broken by the bull. Charlie then tries to fight back, but Ambush is directly crashed to scrap with the bull's fatal attack. After the fight, Charlie has to run away immediately because he has lost all his money in the previous bets. Being about to catch up by two big men, Charlie is ready to use force to solve the problem, but this time he hits the wrong person. These two men are not here to collect the debt. They are in charge of the orphanage. It turns out that Charlie's ex-girlfriend died in an accident, and now his 11-year-old son Max is left unattended. His ex-girlfriend's sister Deborah wants full custody, which makes Charlie happy because he is now penniless. Soon Charlie arrives at the court, and Charlie finds out that Deborah's husband Marvin is very rich. A crooked idea comes to his mind immediately. He calls Marvin outside alone and claims he couldn't bear to part with the child. Just when Charlie is chattering, Marvin's $100,000 offer immediately shuts him up. But Marvin has one condition that Charlie retains custody of Max for three months while he and Deborah go on vacation. Charlie finally chooses to agree with the temptation of money. The first thing Charlie does after getting the money is to buy another boxing robot Noisy Boy. And Noisy Boy is not simple. Who once even has the power to win the global championship? Max also likes it very much. The first time he touches it, he can command the robot to do all kinds of actions. Then Charlie discovers in his research that the noisy boy can be controlled by voice and has a whole set of combinations pre-installed in its system, so noisy boy can make a variety of complex combinations of moves. This also excites Charlie, and he immediately takes noisy boy to an underworld boxing arena crash palace. Tonight he has to win with pleasure, however, Charlie's old arrogance is back and he even decides to skip the warm-ups and challenge Midas, the strongest robot here, and he bets all his money and regardless of Max's dissuasion, the fight officially begins upon the ring of the bell. Noisy Boy knocks his opponent out with a heavy punch, and Charlie shouts aloud with joy, with Charlie in control. Noisy Boy keeps upper front in the fight. Even Max is exhilarated to see his opponent being beaten, because Charlie used to be a boxer, he has a special understanding of fighting. Noisy Boy could easily make all kinds of moves under his control, but its opponent is not a soft target. Midas soon gets back to its feet. Noisy Boy attacks again, forcing the opponent to a dead end. Charlie is prepared to use the ultimate skill. It is unexpected that the opponent would seize the weakness. Noisy Boy is directly knocked out by a punch. Then Midas rushes straight up, and Charlie tries to direct Noisy Boy to counter attack, but he only acquires Noisy Boy for just half a day and doesn't know well about its boxing moves and designs. In such an emergency, Charlie even makes a lot of wrong responses for Noisy Boy. Soon Noisy Boy keeps beaten up, and under Midas' successive attacks, Noisy Boy's arm is broken. Now Noisy Boy is not even an opponent. Amidst the crowd's wild cheer, Midas also strikes the last blow. And this time Noisy Boy never stands up again. After the match, Charlie finds that Noisy Boy has been completely scrapped. And he is again penniless. Charlie takes Max to the metal recycling station, where they may find something valuable. While Charlie is looking around for robot parts, little Max walks to the edge of the cliff. Charlie just makes a reminder. The ground under Max's feet suddenly slips, and Max falls down. It's quite lucky that Max's clothes are hung up by something at the last moment when he is about to fall off the cliff. Soon Charlie arrives. He immediately saves Max up. This is also the first time in years that father and son embrace each other. By the time Max comes back to his senses, he is very curious about what saved him just now. Max gently plucks away the mud and sand and finds a broken robot in the garbage. As Max continues his efforts, the robot finally appears intact. Max happily takes the robot back. He powers up the robot after returning home. Unexpectedly, the robot could still run after being buried in the ground for so many years. This also surprises Father Charlie. Then Max is ready to clean the robot and finds a name tag on the robot's chest. And it seems that Adam is the robot's name. Max asks his father to take Adam to the competition, but Charlie doesn't agree. It turns out that this is just a sparring robot, and its function is to imitate other people's movements, and it will only be beaten up in the fight. But Max is unwilling to give up. 
He takes Adam alone and starts training at night. Adam has a rare shadow function, it can mirror and memorize all of Max's movements. During his contact with Adam, Max always felt that Adam was not an ordinary robot. Its dark blue eyes seem to have its own intelligence. Charlie is awakened quite early in the morning the next day. He finds out that Max is teaching Adam how to box. Seeing that his son is so persistent, Charlie decides to take Adam to the actual boxing competition so that Max can give up. When they arrive at the competition, Charlie wants to control Adam himself. But Max is still angry and insists on doing it himself. As the game begins, the enemy robot rushes up right away. It first stomps on Adam's paws and then punches Adam hard. Max is manipulating Adam for the first time. His reaction and experience are obviously green, and soon Adam keeps only beaten up. Fortunately, Adam is a sparring robot and can carry all the attacks with thick armor. When Adam is about to wear out, the first round is just about over, Max manages to hold out in the first round. The game soon comes to the second round. Charlie starts to guide him, which helps Adam to avoid the attack properly. Max then controls Adam to throw an uppercut, which paralyzes the opponent robot's system. So Max and his father win the game and get paid accordingly. Just as Charlie is about to leave, an agent approaches to invite Adam to a bigger competition, but Charlie doesn't make a response after looking at the address. When they return home, Max is happy to play a song to celebrate, and Adam surprisingly makes the same moves as him. It can even dance together with Max. And Charlie observes it all. Adam's shadow function is the most powerful he has ever seen. As long as he could upgrade its combat system, he believes Adam would be able to compete in professional competitions. Then Charlie starts to teach Adam to fight. He wants to transfer all his years of fighting experience to Adam. And Adam also lives up to the expectations, as it can capture Charlie's every subtle movement. Under Charlie's instruction, the human fighting style is gradually engraved into Adam's system. Later, Charlie and his son start taking Adam everywhere to compete. Before each match, Max would take Adam to dance with him, and Charlie is responsible for controlling Adam in the battle. This time Charlie isn't too ambitious. They start with the weakest opponent. At first, Charlie and Adam are a bit rusty in cooperation, but Adam can survive each time with its armor, and eventually they win the game, as experiencing more and more battles. Charlie and Adam cooperate more and more smoothly, they become more and more powerful, and the opponents they encounter become more and more stronger too. But no matter what their opponents are, they all eventually fall under Adam's fists. As Adam's reputation grows, they are finally invited to World Robot Boxing Fight. If Adam could win the next fight, he could challenge the most powerful robot in history, the undefeated mythical Zeus. This is Adam's first professional league match, and his opponent is the mighty Twin Cities. Adam is undaunted, and under Charlie's control, it begins to dodge its opponent's attacks and then takes the opportunity to counterattack while defending, but Twin Cities is the most advanced robot. Not only does it have a 360-degree angle view but it also has a unique combat system which requires two people to manipulate at the same time. Under Twin Cities' attack, Adam is soon forced to defend and gradually to a dead end, viewing that Adam could only keep beaten up. Max is hurried to ask his father to think of a solution. Soon Charlie observes Twin Cities' weakness. It turns out that Twin Cities' design is flawed. Its extra-long arms can produce more destructive power, but this also makes its closing action slow. If they get close enough, Twin Cities can't hit Adam. It works! And under Adam's successive attacks, the two-headed robot is unable to counterattack. Finally, Adam throws a right hook to end the match. Everyone in the audience is boiling. No one expects that this old and worn-out robot could win. But in the finals, Adam is going to face Zeus, the strongest robot in the world. The undefeated myth. Just by Zeus and Adam's appearance, one could see how far apart they are. With the ringing of the bell, the first round of the match also officially begins. It is not expected that Zeus would knock Adam to the ground with just one punch and almost shut it down. Just when everyone considers the fight is over, Charlie calls out to Adam, and it gets up with difficulty, but before it can get back on its feet. Zeus starts attacking again, and Adam is knocked to the ground again. The referee runs over to start the countdown, and Max shouts for Adam to get up. And Adam seems to have heard Max's voice, and gets up again. But now Adam keeps beaten and is cornered again. Zeus' iron fist is hitting it hard, 
and Adam can only defend himself. It is no surprise to anyone that Zeus is so powerful, but no one expects Adam to last so long. And at this time, Adam finally hits his opponent with a right hook. Then, under Charlie's control, Adam also starts to fight back. While Adam is gaining the upper hand, Zeus finally uses its full power and starts to counterattack Adam immediately. Zeus has a high degree of automation. Not only can it evolve itself during the battle, but its unique operating system also recognizes movements and rewrites the combat code in real time according to the opponent, just as Zeus is about to end the fight with a single blow. The first round is just about over, fortunately. Adam still has a chance. Looking at the smoking Adam, Charlie rushed to repair it. Fortunately, there is no major issue with it. The second round soon begins, and this time Zeus doesn't give Adam a chance. Adam is knocked out again and again, but it manages to get up again and again. The heavy armor gives it unparalleled protection, and under Charlie's control, Adam can sometimes fight back. It uses its fists to vent its anger. The fight goes back and forth and soon comes to the fourth round. However, a hitch happens during the continuous high-intensity battle. Adam's language control system fails to work. Charlie is now unable to control Adam's actions. Fortunately, Adam finally survives under the iron fist of Zeus until the end of this round. Charlie and Max then immediately rush to the ring, after confirming that the control system could not be restored. Max quickly came up with another solution. Adam has a unique shadow system where he has Charlie throw a punch off stage. And the Adam on stage will mimic the same action. Charlie is worried that he will mess things up again. But his son gives him enough confidence through a look of recognition. Just in this way, Charlie swings his fist off stage while Adam mimics his moves on stage. It angers Zeus into shame on seeing his opponent taunting him. They couldn't wait to finish the fight. Zeus is firing on all cylinders against Adam, and Charlie has to defend himself. However, Zeus depletes its power core in a series of high-intense attacks and becomes slower and slower in punches. Adam withstands all the attacks, and it's finally time to counterattack. The more Charlie fights, the more excited he is. It is like he is back in his youth when he is fighting in this ring. Under Charlie's control, Adam lands a heavy uppercut, and Zeus never gets up again. The crowd is a buzz, and nobody thinks this old broken robot could win. In the end, the referee announces the result that Zeus wins the fight by a small margin of points. Adam loses, but everyone in the audience gathers around Max and they chant Adam's name in unison, perhaps they see the self in Adam who pursues own dream as a young man.